Welcome back to InvestBed. Filming a question, but I think this is going to be a question that most people would understand when you are actually having a business, when you're actually negotiating a space with the landlord. So it's a little lengthy. I'll read it and extract out the text of the question. Lease agreement waives landlord's responsibility for defects in the building. It's in the state of Illinois. First time commercial lessee here. I'm currently negotiating for small flex space in a larger building. And there's a section in the agreement waiving the landlord of liability for damages due to defect in the building, which caught me off guard. Is this normal in common and something my insurance would be expected to cover? Or is this something I should have a problem with? Think of it this way. I'm going to use the word landlord and lessor the same, right? The landlord... It's a funny story, but we'll t- touch upon that in a different different story. But lessor is a building owner. So they may have 60 tenants, 100 tenants, 10 tenants. So they would like to keep everything uniform. A lot of the tenants or the lessees feels that they take on a, a lot of risk for opening up the store and doing the business. And that is correct. You are taking the risk of your business. But what is the primary business of a lessor, which is owning and operating and collecting rent from from lessees in their building. So they have to make sure to limit their liability as much as possible on items that they have no control over. That's where they're going to put in the word as is, where is clauses. You'll see that a lot in the commercial real estate. Residential is a little bit different, right? There's so many regulations around it. But most commercial buildings, lease or acquisition, when you're purchasing, on the contract, you're going to see a lot of definition as as is with the code and where it is. So what the landlord is stipulating is that is, hey, we have a four walls and a roof. If something would occur within that building to not our knowledge, and there's a defect, we're not going to be responsible for it. With flex and retail and everything else, multifamily is a little bit different, but it's going to be more commercial real estate as retail office, industrial, things like that, where you have to go in and you have to have a certain insurance and you have to make sure that your building is sound. That doesn't mean the building owner does not have insurance, property insurance, GLs, and umbrella for the buildings, but they have to make that stipulation. Because what happens is if there was a roof leak, and it happens even though if you're maintaining it really well and you're doing prevent and maintenance on a quarterly basis or semi-annual basis, things do occur in life, right? So when that comes in and damages your business, it's clear there's water damage. So the landlord's will inform and notify the insurance carrier, but also at the same time, you as a tenant have to carry COI, Certificate of Insurance. So the insurance company will subrogate, right? That's why they're putting this language in as a blanket. Even though there is a defect and that creates harm as gross negligence, for instance, right? They didn't maintain the roof and the water leak into your premises and created black mold. Eventually that has to get remedied and you know the cause of the origin and things like that will come into play. And both insurance carriers will do that. But landlords not going to just say, okay, it's my fault. We got to take care of it because we're the building owners. Eventually, when you do investigation, you'll find out who's at fault. And at that point, the insurance coverages will take care of it. But in the lease, landlord have to put that languages in there. And I'm just reading their text on that language. Tenant in, in or about the building of the premises from water, rain, or snow, which may leak into issues or flow from any parts of the building or the premises, or from the pipes or plumbing works of the same. That's really broad. They're saying anything could happen and they're not at fault. And that's just limiting their liabilities. I guarantee you, most of these lessors don't know. They're lawyers who will tell you to put those languages in. But let me reassure you, Illinois, New York, California, New Mexico, Texas, there's always going to be real property laws and there's regulations. In California, there's Cal OSHA. There is, you know, workers' comp. There's a lot of different things. So, when things do occur, it's usually the insurance companies that will make sure if they subrogate and things like that. So uh, even though they have that language is in there and it's really a gross negligence or even negligence on part of the landlord or the building owners, you're going to have a good chance that your insurance company will take care of it. And this person doesn't highlight other provisions in the language. That's why I say the leases are very important to fully comprehend everything because there are also something called the condemnation or partial or full destruction clauses in there that will really attach to landlord's responsibility, the tenant's responsibility, right? Something would occur, let's say, a hailstorm, 
and he broke the roof. It's not a landlord's fault. It's that we call it act of God or natural disaster, or we call it the, the technical terminology, force majeure. But still, you're going to be out of the business, right? Because you can't operate. So your insurance will have to kick in. So what they're saying is this and your other insurance provisions, your condemnation, partial destruction, landlord's responsibility, tenant's responsibility, all kind of work cohesively. And there's definitely rights that tenants have, especially you're in Illinois. Illinois is a very tenant favorable state. So even though they put these languages in there, some of the tenants are going to get away with murder, you know, literally. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you should definitely ask your broker or people who are very versed uh, in real estate. But the short answer is it's pretty standard for commercial real estate leases to have this type of provision, which protects the landlord. And if you have any other questions on these, I mean, we, we have other videos on our channels that's going to talk about leases and what to look out for as well, too. That might be helpful for you. If you found this content helpful, please share, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.